Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. I am feeling chatty today. I'm Lee, your everyday light worker. So because of that, because I have the energy, we're going to power through and we're going to talk about um, part two, step two of the formal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission complaint um, resolution program if you happen to work for the federal government. Um, I'm sorry to say that if you work for um, the private sector, this has nothing to do with you. And there's actually very little that can be done for you unless you have a lot of money and a class action suit. I am so sorry, but that is the reality of the situation. I always keep it real with y'all. I always keep it real with y'all. So we're going on to part two of the um, formal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's complaint program for federal employees. Now, when I finished the last video, I stopped with just getting your complaint accepted, which is a major, major hassle. Remember, you have 15 days after the informal complaint program closes, 15 days after that. So you got very short timelines to get these um, complaints on record. And once you get your complaint in, you want to make sure that it gets accepted. And what happens when it gets accepted is, like I said, the agency is going to rewrite the complaint so that it reads like gibberish. And it is your job to make sure that your complaint gets heard in the legal, legal language that it needs to be heard within. And I talk about all kinds, what that legal language is and how, you know, you need to um, articulate those claims. Usually you got um, five categories under the Civil Rights Act of 1964, race, color, national origin, gender, and religion. You also have categories under the Age Discrimination and Employment Act. So that's anybody over 40 has a complaint on um, age and the um, typically people are a little more lenient on that complaint because it's just wrong to just beat up on old people, but it does happen. Um, and then you also have um, the Disabilities Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act that you can file a complaint under, but that is very, very complicated. It is extremely complicated because that law has a lot of requirements you have to meet before you can even be covered under it. And once you are covered under it, you have to determine whether or not you are entitled to an accommodation a lot of the times and that has a lot of different tests that take place in order for that to be turned be determined but um let's say you're at the second stage which is a report of investigation is being conducted so what's going to happen is an a, a attorney is going to be hired from outside of the agency and that's supposed to make them impartial and make them um you know, oh, they don't they don't have a dog in this fight. They they they're going to get their paycheck regardless. Yeah, they are. They're going to get their paycheck for the, from the federal government. And what the federal government wants them to do is turn your complaint into gibberish. So what they do is they ask to meet with you. The investigator asked to meet with you, the complainant, to set up, you know, what your claim is. Now, they got the acceptance letter. They should know full well what your claim is. But they're going to look at that acceptance letter and they are only going to discuss what is in that acceptance letter. So that's why it's very important to get that acceptance letter on point. If you um, need to amend, you, you will tell them that I need to amend because they get paid based on the number of claims they investigate. So they've got an acceptance letter that says A, B, C, D, E, F, G type of things. And they're only going to investigate what is in that acceptance letter. And they start by just breaking it up in a weird, weird way. They ask the questions in such a weird way that people really don't know what to say, but that's what they do. They, they come, they get your, your claims and they'll ask um, in a really funny way, who, you know, they'll start off with very basic things. And this is gonna be your affidavit. Who do you work for? Name the person, what is their race? What is their color? What evidence do you have that they discriminated against you on, on race and on color? And most people don't have a lot of evidence other than they are being treated differently and they don't they can't say why so that type of investigation is just a way for them to check off the box and say you're not being discriminated against because you're not going to have the kind of unless you got really egregious red flag type stuff like somebody ran into the office and said and we're in we're in we're in we're in we're in we're in we're here's a noose it happens it happens. But um, unless you have that kind of thing happening, 
you're not going to have a lot of evidence and it's going to be a whole lot of he said, she said. So what your job is at that point is to make sure that your claims, what, what, how you feel you have been treated differently gets articulated and how people who are a different race than you or a different gender than you or have are able do not have a disability are treated differently that's where your proof lies in the fact that i'm treated this way and yet other people are treated that way and that kind of pushes it more to the um fact of there being evidence um on your behalf so i need to look at my notes for a second to see where we're at all right so they're going to ask you for your affidavit. Your affidavit, the complainant's affidavit sets it up. And then they go off of the complainant's affidavit and ask questions to anybody who you identify as a witness. And so it is really important to identify witnesses that you feel will support you um, and have them be questioned. Now, this is where people get scary. People don't want, they don't want the smoke. They don't want to be involved in this process. They know that there's usually retaliation of some process and only the bravest of people or people who are about to resign will be like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this. I'm going to go on the record saying what I need to say. Sometimes places are so corrupt that people resign because of it. And then they go on record with, you know, this is the real deal. You know, this is crazy, the kind of discrimination, the kind of harassment, the kind of whatever that's going on in this place. So um, always keep your records. Um, don't ever give up. Always, you know, one thing about the federal government is that you can use this process repeatedly, repeatedly. They don't mind you using this process. So you can become a perpetual complainer. And quite honestly, the federal government encourages perpetual complaints because it doesn't really do anything the first time or the second time. Or maybe the third time we'll get it. Maybe the third time will be the charm. So remember that as long as discrimination is, is ongoing, you can continue to file complaints. Um, and those are the people who win, the people who never shut up and just keep on, keep on with their complaints and um, spin their wheels in this process. But eventually they do get hits. So what's going to happen is that the investigator has 180 days um, to complete the investigation. Now, like I said, that's a long time. That is six months. So six months, oftentimes people have got to deal with behavior from their supervisor that is retaliatory and is getting worse and worse and worse. Document it. Because like I said, with the feds, you can keep filing complaints. So you, next time you file a complaint of retaliation, you know what? I complain and this is all the stuff that happened to me after I filed that complaint. Keep a good written record of it. I know it's tedious, but it's the only thing that pays off in the end. Um, so you got 180 days after that um, report is sent in to the agency. Again, it's supposed to be sent in to the EEO office. The EEO office has 60 days after the receipt of that report to take remedial action. What does remedial action mean? It means that it has read the complaint and it feels like some things are wrong and it feels that the agency should do something to stop this discrimination. How often do you think that happens? How often do you think that happens? Like I said, first of all, these civil rights agencies within these federal agencies are very much at the whim of the executive branch and that's whoever is the president. You have some presidents who will be like, go into that office, go into that EEO office and eat and fart every day, eat and fart every day. I don't care if you don't do a damn thing. Just kick up your feet, eat and fart every day, collect your paycheck, collect your paycheck, collect your paycheck and do nothing. That is how they, those offices typically get run under a Republican executive branch. I, I'm just being honest. I'm just keeping it real to you, with you. These um, laws are very, very politicized. Then you had the Democrats. The Democrats will come in and they will talk a good game. They will talk a good game. They want you to do the work. They want you to get the complaints down. They want you to really investigate. Um, the Democrats do do that some of the time. But um, 
it's the same process. It's the same BS process. So still, you get a little more traction with a Democrat in office, but honestly, not a whole hell of a lot of traction. Um, just going to keep it 100 with you. Um, so it's rare that the agency is like, you know what? This is, this is jacked up. I read this report. It's jacked up. Um, you know, y'all need to do something about this. Please take some remedial action and do A, B, C, D, F, G. It's rare. It happens, but it's, it's rare. Um, things usually have got to be pretty egregious before that sort of thing happens. And definitely Democrats got to be in power and in office for that sort of thing to happen. Or you got to get the attention of a Republican who wants to pretend like they care um, for anything to happen. And, um, so that report for the most part just sits there and collects dust and they will be thick. They will be like a thousand page thick reports because one thing the feds can do is they can push paper like a mug. They can push paper like a mug. So you have Tons and tons and tons of paper about what they know they should have done, but did not do. But did not do. But they got all the paper saying, oh, we know we're supposed to do this. We know we're supposed to do that. We know we're supposed to do this. No, no, no. Um, so they, they, they do have that paper. Sorry, I was getting interrupted. I had to wave them away. Um, so they have all of that, um, stuff, but there are, um, three options. You can, after that report is done and they basically, and the feds basically do nothing, you can close the complaint and you're going to be right back where you started. But some people just get tired. They have such high hopes and high expectations that if they prove their case and they show that they're being treated like crap and they got the evidence and they got all their ducks in a row, they really believe that, you know, it's just a naivete that's heartbreaking when, when you got to witness people's hopes and dreams of being treated like a decent human being crumble. Um, they just, you know, they give up. And then, so that's, you know, when they will be like, I'm not fighting this no more. I'm going to close the complaint. You can request a final agency decision. I do not um, recommend that because... It's rare that the agency will really write anything that goes against itself. It's rare. Again, it has to be really, really egregious for the agency to say, you know what? Um, we looked at this report and, you know, something here ain't right. Something don't quite look right. It has to be really bad for the agency to, to, to do that. But um, that is one of the options that you have under a final agency decision. A final agency decision is easy because you don't really have to do anything except ask that the agency do that, write their decision. The agencies have become extraordinary in finding legal ways to say, we ain't do nothing wrong. We ain't do nothing wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Legal, legal. Pages and pages of legal boring stuff saying we did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. We yeah, they're really good at that. Really good at that. When they know that people is getting raped in the bathrooms. When they know that they got trust, binders and binders. I don't work in these offices, so I know they have binders and binders and binders um, to teach them how to just cut and paste and say, we did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. The case law says that we did nothing wrong. So your best bet is to get is to request a hearing before an administrative judge. And that is when things get super duper, duper legalistic. That's your best shot at justice. Because these judges know the law and they also know people. They know the people on people. They know when these laws are being violated. They are the type of judges that have done nothing but this kind of law. So I will say that with regard to most of the EEOC judges, um, I have, if they really are serious about their EEO law, they will be fair and hear the case to my experience. But there are some, again, it's very political. There are some people who just get on the EEOC to, to, so it's, a, cause it's a pathway to a federal bench and they 
do not give a damn. They not going to ever fight against the agency because that's just not within their political um, trajectory. Their political trajectory is to go to the EOC to be like, nah, nah, no discrimination, no discrimination. No, 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 nah, nah. Oh, you got raped. Bitch, you got raped. Oh, well, no discrimination, no discrimination, no discrimination, no discrimination. That is, you know, what they do. So, um, I hope, I hope I'm entertaining. I'm bringing my full entire self to these videos because I don't want you to get bored. So, um, you know, that is where we are at step two of the process, which ends with the report of investigation, what happens with that and what you can expect after that. So that is, um, you know, that's where we're at. And um, I'm sorry that it's not better news, but like I said, I'm just gonna keep it 100 with y'all. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um, if you have a good complaint, if you think you have a good complaint, usually in those cases, um, it's systematic, it's problematic. So, you know, power in numbers, power in numbers. Just keep your, um, keep your head up and keep, you know, it quiet, be a perfect complainant. And I'll talk about what a perfect complainant is. And um, just keep on pressing on. Don't let them see you sweat. Keep going on with your professional com professionalism. And, um, you know, keep articulating your complaint. And eventually you will be heard. I'm so sorry that in today's days and times, it has come to this. But um, there's a lot of turning the clock backness going on in America. So I really feel like I need to get these videos out so that people can protect themselves against just blatant, egregious, outrageous discrimination that's occurring. So um, I hope this helps. Peace out. Emily, your everyday light worker.